Hello, people, and welcome to another edition of Dose of Drew. Tonight is not a knife review. Tonight is the top 10 knives that have ended up in my pocket more than I expected them when I bought them. So these are the knives that have both surprised me in their subtle utility as well as just their ability to do daily tasks as well as fit well in with, say, like wardrobe, seasons, and all that sort of stuff. So it's you're going to see a lot of the lightweight knives show up simply because of where I live and my carry type, but it's not all. So there's going to be 10 knives plus a honorable mention that didn't quite fit in the criteria, and I'll explain that when I get there. But for now, let's get started at number 10. The Civivi Rustic Gent. This knife has no pocket clip. It's relatively lightweight, right? It uh, just under 2.6 ounces, just over two and a half ounces by a few grams. Um, lock back, short enough blade. I'll show you right here where you go tip to scale, right at just under three inches. So it's easily carried in many different places. The D2 steel with that hollow grind clip point, far back, uh, lock back, a nice half stop like a slip joint, a decent walk and talk for a lock back, and uh, that slip joint slimness and all that stuff. So this actually ends up in my pocket when I, I, I don't decide on something else like oh man right or me maybe i'm wearing something that doesn't quite match the shade or colors or anything this one goes in my pocket all by itself not not clipped to the not clipped to the pocket no pocket clip it just sits in there free and it and it does it more than i expected it to ever um not having a pocket clip i actually didn't expect to carry this a lot um but it has ended up in my pocket just a sheer lots of times just because of its sheer utility. This blade can do every EDC job you ask of it. And though it is like a slip joint, that back lock on it means that you don't have to have the same conscientious, um, you know, attention that a slip joint always requires. Um, it just really has a lot of utility, even though it has a lot of the same features that make a slip joint. You know, that half stop could be a little further back, but it is what it is. And the walk and talk, pretty decent. For a non-slip joint, is pretty decent. Um, but yeah, so number 10. This, this just is a really good knife that ends up in my pocket a lot, simply because it... if. It can go in there free. If it's shorts or slacks that have like a little coin pocket, right? This ends up sitting in there wonderfully. Um, just a really good knife that does all the EDC tasks and can go into any pocket. You don't have to worry about whether or not it matches, it prints, or anything. It's just going to be in your pocket to be a tool. So that's number 10. All right, number nine. The Ferrum Forge Stinger. Okay, this one ends up in my pocket a lot more than I thought it would, simply because I got this to be a uh, an alternative to the Wee Kitefin. Wee Kitefin is a fantastic knife. It's a frame lock, which isn't always my favorite. I know it's a strong lock, but it's not always my favorite for an EDC blade. Um, you can, you know, you can get end up with your finger the kite fin's got a lot of space so you don't as quite as much with such a light blade even a little bit of pressure on there on that frame lock is not my favorite they have button lock versions of this out now but i have one of the original marbled carbon fiber that were out of stock for so long it has the classy bronzed black clip it's very classy all around and extremely lightweight but oh wait here 2.35 fits in a lot of stuff, but this one is 2.53. So it's like a quarter ounce. For those of you who don't know what that is, that's about seven or so grams. 7.1, I believe. Um, so it's about seven grams heavier. <laughs> a little right around there, seven or eight grams. Um, 
Nitro V steel instead of S35 VN, significantly cheaper. Deep carry clip that actually carries deeper than the kite fin. There you go, you can see that now. There's actually a little bit more kite fin sticking up there. So it actually carries deeper than kite fin. And while it has a semi matte silver, the relative lightweight, the ergonomics that are so similar and still so fantastic, as well as, believe it or not, the multiple opening with the fuller that you can flick that you cannot use. There's one complaint on the kite fin. It has one deployment method. It is a flipper first and foremost. And the Fair and Forge is a bit more fidgety, right? You can do all of the flips if your hand's right, if you don't screw it up like I do. It's lightweight enough, tough enough, got the Nitro V steel, will still hold an edge. While it doesn't quite hold an edge like the S35VN, it is tougher and it does take an extremely fine edge and it has that really high flat grind as opposed to the uh, hollow grind. So it does a lot of things extraordinarily well for a much, much lower price. I didn't expect this to end up in my pocket more than the kite fin, but it does. Um, it's just a good, useful tool. And since I don't use my knives to a huge degree on a daily basis, but I probably use them at least once a day in some form or another, um, that actually matters. And I love the design and the styling and just the look of the kite fin, but the Fair and Forge Stinger gets in my pocket probably twice as much, if not more. So that's number nine, way more than I thought I was going to. Number eight, the Fox Knives, Vox Knives, Chillin, right? Or Chillin, or however you want to call it. That is based on the Chillin Cutter, the uh, Taiwanese knife. That is also the inspiration for the Vosti Nightshade. Uh, Vosti Nightshade, I, because I had this knife first, I actually expected to use the Vosti Nightshade a lot, which is one of the reasons it's not in this list. Uh, and partly because the M398 steel on here, along with the micarta, this may, it's a little bit heavier. This is one of the heavier knives on the list here, over three and a half ounces. But as far as big knives goes, that's pretty light. Um, that's right. That's almost lightweight for a larger size knife. Uh, it has a thick chunk of this M390. And for those who don't know, M390 is about 20% chromium and about 4% vanadium. This is, I'm pretty sure, this is about 20% chromium and about 8% vanadium. So you get a lot of vanadium carbides. It still has decent corrosion resistance, less in toughness, but edge retention closer to S90V uh, and definitely greater than M390. Still takes a fantastic edge. This is a work sharp edge. Um, if, if you haven't, the other ones, you don't see it quite as much. But uh, if you go through and you see that they look like they have a sharpened edge, it is most likely a work sharp edge. And I'll probably call it out. If I miss, by all means, catch me in the comments and I'll let you know if it was or wasn't. But this was just, this is just generally a lightweight. The, the thing over the nightshade is it has this sort of like dip, sort of like the rat one and two do, that acts sort of like a finger trail. It presents a, a indented place to put your fingertip. Uh, and if you've seen that my review on this, these, these sort of little button right here that has this ring that's raised, gives you a place to positively just put your fingers. Oh, I know where this is. I don't have to look at this knife to know if I've where I've grabbed it because I can tell from that little dip that that's where the pivot is. I can use it in a pinch grip, in a uh, choked up or a full saber grip. The high flat grind is not complete. It's not completely, you know, full flat. There's this tiny little bit right there. That is the top of the uh, grind line. But it is so tall, such a large belly on the blade. E even as thick as it is, it still has decent geometry. It's slicey enough. And I sharpen this probably six months or more ago and have not even had to touch it up it just it, it just lasts wickedly sharp shaving sharp for days relatively light for a large knife one of my lighter large knives um and the edge retention and utility on this thing the shilling cutter is a is a classic for a reason and this thing takes a lot of the best cues from it as well as just vox Nays designs knowledge of 
ergonomics of hand ergonomics and how knives are used um, to just really knock it out of the park. And it being lightweight enough to take uh, in some heavier shorts, not the lightest like swim shorts or anything, but heavier shorts, anything that's fabric, this is light enough to be in. And um, it ends up in there. It's so useful. It's so co comfortable. It ends up in my pocket a lot more than I thought I would. And the only reason it's lower than the other big knife on this list, which is coming up next, is because I haven't had it as long. And so this one is number eight, and that will bring us to number seven. The heaviest knife on this list, the Protec Mordax. Just barely outshines the... Uh, it's, it is pretty lightweight for a big knife. It is more blade by far and a slightly larger knife though I will argue about the hand space it it does have a you know fairly decent hand space a, uh, advantage s45 vn extremely tough corrosion resistant and uh pretty good edge retention this again work sharp edge you can on there um s45 vn takes that edge really good is extremely uh long lasting so far and really the button lock on this one has loosened up with just a load of fidgeting um it's still very snappy and controllable generic and i mean this in the best way generic ergonomics that will fit many hands many grips many tasks probably the single biggest complaint is how that on a on a grip kind of prevent presents a hot spot the clip it, but that's only if you plan on using it all day if you choke up it's perfect if you're in a pinch grip it's fine it's only in the saber grip that it kind of sits in between those two knuckles and there's a little bit of a a bill there that goes straight that kind of can dig into some people might like that better than the straight up one that kind of pokes in there you know that's really a subjective thing but it, it does manage to go right in between those knuckles on me and I think on most people it'll be in that same type of spot. So it's in the best possible place. It's really just a, a matter of subjective values if that's the spot for you. But it is in one of the best place spots and choked up it doesn't matter. The button lock is ridiculously good. Protec is just fine and that beautiful blue makes it hard to not carry. The matte gray means it goes with a lot of my gray clothes my hiking pants hiking shorts that are just like essentially slate gray or even sweats this goes with it it's tight enough that it holds but not so bad that you can't take it off that little lip makes it good for pulling and there's the hidden lanyard if you happen to carry that way and it's still pretty light for a big knife i didn't i don't carry many big knives where I live, the climate, and the type of clothes I wear to deal with that climate kind of dictates that for me. Again, the coldest it's been so far this winter is in the 45 to 50 degree range as an overnight low. In a lot of places in the country where this, where people are, that will be their daily high at this time of year. And this is, you know, coming out just after the first weekend after 2023. So first weekend of 2024. So this is be this is the beginning of January, winter in the northern hemisphere. So for a lot of people out there, my nightly low is like their daily high. That's why I don't wear a lot of heavy clothes and why I don't carry a lot of heavy knives. They just it looks like I'm packing something besides a knife or I'm trying to look like I'm packing something more. But it's relatively thin, still has incredibly sliciness, does everything you could want a knife to do. Does it in a slim and trim package and yes you can do that you can really control that blade coming down um just ends up in my pocket a lot and especially with the, the uh you know the new work the new non-factory edge there the factory edge was fine but i did put a work sharp edge on it it just has not even needed a stropping Really good edge retention, really good edge stability, and pretty good uh, corrosion resistance. For me, it's far more corrosion resistance than it needs. D2 has enough corrosion resistance for most of my uses. And this one just, I don't expect to carry a big knife, and it has ended up in my pocket 
more on fre more frequent than this one even has uh, the chillin', and therefore it has earned itself the seventh place. It hasn't been my popular lot, but it's a lot more than I thought it was going to. Protec Mordex Fair and Forge Design Protec built, absolutely fantastic. Number six, the Vosteed Raccoon. Now this, I could have easily put the uh, sheep's foot in here as well to represent. But this is representing both of the styles. I have both. I've had the green one longer, so it's just ended up in my pocket. And I kind of expected to carry the sheep's foot because of this. So I'm putting this one in to represent both. And here's the thing. I thought this was going to be an okay knife. You know, I, I, I was given Vossied a chance. I had liked the nightshade, you know, I, I, and that sort of stuff. And this thing blew, has blown me away. It is one of the best, not just, I mean, it's one of the best original Vossi designs. It's just a really good EDC for a, for a reasonable price. The 14C28N steel seems to be very well heat treated. It takes a really sick, this is a work sharp edge and I almost just cut myself trying to do a little bit. You can might even be able to see the little, let me see. I don't know if you can see it now. You can't probably can't see the little, white marks there from just testing it that's the 14c28 edge uh 14c28 n with a work sharp edge high flat grind classic drop point lots of ergonomic possibilities and an incredibly tight package the crossbar lock for all sorts of wonderful uh ambidextrous as well as finger safe operation it's not extra fancy in fact it's you know, it's not even metal back here. They use a micarta. They use, but it's good. It's well made. They only do what's necessary for the price. It is one of the best values out there um, for just capability. And again, if you don't like the drop point, you like the sheep's foot. Everything I just said about the drop point applies to the sheep's foot, but it just has that other blade style. It is truly one of the most versatile knives out there. And when I bought it, I thought, eh. I may or may not, you know, have this in my pocket. And I have used this knife far more than I thought. Um, it is extraordinarily good um, in just about any capacity. And for the money, there's, you can argue other knives, but it's in the top running of bang for the buck of anything, if you ask me. There's, if anything, Vosteed's almost competing against itself. There are a couple other knives on here that I'll get into, but this one surprised me incredibly um, and has been one of the most used knives just in general. Um, I expected I might do it depending on how good it was, but it, it, it really did blow me away and far exceeded my expectations and has been in my pocket a lot. So number six, rounding out the bottom half of this list, the Vosteed Raccoon in any format. Now I'm going to get to the uh, honorable mentions here. Honorable mention on this one, the rat slash BRK chirp. This one did not make the cut, not because um, it's not common, but because I don't, it's not that I don't really carry these. These end up in like my car, in the garage, in, in the drawer. These are the ones I put in places where I want to make sure I have a knife. So if I ever go there, didn't put one in my pocket for some reason, it's there. The blades are short. Um, it's easily under three inches. It's slightly over two, but it's well under three, not even a question. So it's good. If it's in the car, it, it's a two-handed blade. It is locking, but that's usually not a problem in most uh, places in the U.S. where I'm at. The three inches is the two-handed open and close. Um, I've got it in all three types, the, my car to the G10 and the uh, carbon fiber. The newer ones have slightly different the carbon fiber has the biggest nail nick the blue is just a little bit and the old my the micarta has a relatively small nail nick compared to the rest so it is a little bit interesting how that seems to be the biggest change and if you're eyeballing the the carbon fiber let's see if i can get that in there i believe it looks it, it actually looks like it's a veneer but on the side let's see if i can get that you can see kind of the layers. It doesn't do too bad. Uh, it doesn't look like G10. It looks like it's actual carbon fiber. So interesting enough, there there is that. But these, I it's not so much that I carry them, but they are my, at, at under 
except for the carbon fiber. They're just really the go-to knives I go and put there. They're, they're really, really good. One's in my backpack or one's in my car or one's in the garage that I had to pull them from actually literally all three of those places in order to bring them here for this list. But they deserve an honorable mention because they are a knife that I put anywhere. They're cheap enough that I can lose it and not really complain. Even the carbon fiber is like instead of 30, it's like 40 bucks. It's just... There is, instead of the penguin where there may be some, you know, maybe some question on the length, I, I, I keep the chirp. It's a two-headed knife. It's not going to scare anyone. While the D, thin D2 blade will be useful just about anywhere I go. It can be used for any really good knife thing. So these get an honorable mention as my go-to knives that I don't wear. <laughs> so I don't really carry them that much, but they are my knife of choice for the the spare knife the backup knife to be in those places it's inexpensive enough that for the price of a hundred dollar knife i can have three of them so the, that that those get an honorable mention the next ones are going to be another that uh, are similar but have just been more and that is the real steel soulless slip joint here at number five lightweight slim slip joint with that 60 40 the thin d2 blade sheep's foot that works for anything and <clears throat> a bronze color that matches like tan and khaki shorts and for the lightweight it doesn't matter if it's nylon or fabric this knife can go in there it's deep enough carry that almost all of the black doesn't even show there's just a tiny little bit and, and this matches a, a, a khaki or brown color very very well um, so the bronze, I have both. Again, I believe this is like 30, 35 bucks. It's extraordinarily inexpensive for what it is. Um, and I might be quoting prices before inflation hit. I've had these for a little while now. So if they've gone up, by all means, correct me in the comments. I haven't checked prices. I haven't bought one in a while. So the prices may have gone up a little bit, but they're still probably really inexpensive. The sort of button design on the pivot here gives you similar to uh, what i was talking about on the chillin it gives you very positive indexing of your fingers you can use it in the if right it won't bite your finger too bad in that 60 40 and if you're choked up you actually have a little bit of resistance to it but if you are choked back and it hits that 60 it's not going to bite your finger too bad and it does have a oh, better Decent walk and talk. It's not super loud. Ooh, but it is pretty snappy. I'm trying to do it with one hand so you can be on camera. Right? It's fairly snappy. Really, really useful. When I first bought this to review, I thought, eh, I might put it. I don't usually carry slip joints because they, you know, I, I, I don't like the fact that they can close. I have a few and almost all of them have a choil, so your fingers there. This one really doesn't. And it has ended up in my pocket a lot. The D2 will hold an edge for a long time. The forces are all controlled by the sheep's foot blade to be going into the back space or you should never be doing, there's no upper stuff that where you try and do a point and it'll push this way instead of that way. So, and being the lightweightness of these is ridiculous. It is less than a bug out, 1.8 ounces. It's hard to find a lighter weight knife than that. Um, just can go anywhere. And I did not expect to be carrying a slip joint. And I have carried these many times, especially the bronze one in like some brown shorts, but the black one too, because it is just such a wonderful, easy EDC. The gunstock... Uh, you know, handle style. It's, it, it's very well designed to do to be a really good EDC slip joint, and it has found its way into my pocket way more times than I thought it was going to. All right, <coughs> that was number five. <coughs> Excuse me, with the real steel soulless slip joint. For those of you that follow, they also have a Luna slip joint. So there's like the moon and the sun. It's really interesting. But we'll come to number four. That is the Vostid Mini Nightshade. Now, I am bringing the 14C 28N out because it is the least expensive one of them. And it is the one that I've had the longest and ends up in my pocket the most. But along with that, I no longer have the limited edition one because, as 
many of you viewers know, that was the one that was chosen by the viewers to be removed from my collection and given to a viewer. So that is not a complaint. That's just an explanation why I don't have four here. <laughs> I believe it was Chef Pelly, and congratulations, sir. Well-deserved, and that was, uh, def again, not a complaint, just an explanation. The S35VNs, though, are at the $99 mark. And while I absolutely love them, uh, for about $30 less, there's the one in 14C28N, which is perfectly capable, less expensive, and arguably, in some ways, almost the better one. Anyone who's already seen my reviews, I don't need to go much over it. It is extremely good for such a small knife. I did not expect to carry such a small knife as much as I do. Much like the Real Steel Solace just before this, the lightweightness of it, right at the same thing as the Real Steel Solace, literally a hundredth of an ounce less, according to this scale, probably well within the... Uh, Margin of error on the scale. It's right at there at about 1.8 ounces. That 14C28 blade does everything you need an EDC knife to do. It's small. It's not the thinnest, but it's still just overly small. While still having big knife characteristics. That's a tall blade. That's thin blade stock. <clears throat> Lots. It's... Oh, boy. I hate to even say this. It is a better small knife than the uh, Spyderco Dragonfly 2, which was my previous, probably top top small knife. It's, it is still a little bit bigger, but it's approximately the same hand space with a lot more blade. Uh, the ease of the crossbar lock on such a small package. The fact that they're able to get this crossbar lock to work on such a small package. And it being able to fit into my pocket, I have carried this little knife way more than I thought I would ever carry a little knife and it does it works like a big knife and I really do mean that and just for comparison there's the cutting edge of the paramilitary three it is just a tiny bit more cutting edge and almost the same blade height just slightly bigger blade height and a much larger knife as the mini nightshade this is a little knife that works like a big knife, sits comfortably in between many of those, and really just gets used a lot. Um, just gets used tremendously in my pocket, sometimes not. Um, yeah, incredible knife. Definitely rolling up number four here, which tells you is going to tell you a little bit more about it. This 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 probably could be number three. Um, it's really hard. The, the next knife, in fact, is, is, and I'll tell you why, the CJRB Lagos. It, this one is a little bit heavier, but this one I end up using probably almost more than any of the others. I don't always carry it like in the pocket clip, but I often carry it in my pocket. And when it's not in my pocket, it sits out on the kitchen counter. And when I'm growing peppers and stuff, this is literally the knife I use to prep Stuff I pull out of my patio garden. The AR RPM 9 steel is great as a, a sort of kitchen knife steel. It takes a wickedly sharp edge. It can take a very fine edge. It has a good grind for that kind of stuff. And it has almost this Santoku type profile. It is fantastic for food prep. While uh, you know lending itself to a fairly decent hand grip. It's got a pretty you know big... Uh, swell it's about the same size as the mylea but it's just over a longer space so it doesn't seem like it um so you get a pretty good hand swell that's really really nice a generous choil the ability to manipulate and since it has that button lock you can have dirty hands and you don't get any of you know we talk a lot about safety but the other thing i'm starting to learn is if you're doing stuff and you need to close it i can do this and I don't get any of the grit from my hands into the in-betweens there. So it actually tends to stay pretty clean. I carry this much like I, ca honestly, like I carry the Rustic Gent. It doesn't actually often go in my pocket, but this is used around my house a lot. And way, way more for stuff that I never thought I would use it for when I first bought it. I didn't think this would be my folding kitchen knife, which it really is. More often than not, this is my folding kitchen knife. Um, 
and so it's, I've used it so much more than I thought I would. It has kind of a cool little personality with the deployment hole. It gives it kind of an eyeball. It, it reminds me of a similarly to the uh, uh, Honey Badger, the old Warren Cleaver style with the, you know, the, the tilted uh, deployment hole. Um, it's got a lot of personality. That AR RPM 9 steel is a great kitchen knife steel, believe it or not. I'm really impressed with how it works in that fashion. It's, it's corrosion resistance is good. It's edge retention is pretty good, and I've used it enough that I've had to strop it. So its edge retention is okay. You know, it's, it's a, it, it'll last all day, but it probably won't last two days. Uh, unlike something like S90V or the M398 or the, even the S45N, where you might be able to have it last all week or at least a couple of days before you need to strop it. They are PM9. It'll probably go all day, and then you should strop it. But for the price, it's good. The button lock is really good. And I just, this is literally my pocket or folding kitchen knife. And so I've used it way, way more than I thought it would. And that brought it to number three. Number two, and this one almost was number one. The Real Steel Sacra. This little knife, let me tell you, um, way, way in my pocket, way, way more than I thought it would. 2.7 ounces, so it's relatively lightweight. Incredibly sturdy and robust with that folded steel. Contour G10 that makes it incredibly comfortable and it's already fairly slim. The crossbar lock, the just efficiency of shape that tip of that blade is right there it is very close to the edge there's no wasted space lots of hand space I, the full saber grip can get in there there's not a, really a choil but there's a a, a generous the sh the sharpening to choil goes way past the plunge line so there's a generous space there for the pinch grip where the tip of your finger can kind of go the big thumb studs give you a place to kind of pinch and, and you so the pinch grip works well the uh, you know sort of finger painting grip saber grip is pretty good if you have to the d2 steel high saber grind this has a work sharp edge on it that i that has held this edge remarkably well it does seem to be decently heat treated um i've had d2 that lasts a little bit longer this seems like it <laughs> instead of the 60 to 62 on d2 this is probably that 59 to 60 um it'll roll before it'll chip is essentially the uh the and this is i say i say d2 it's k110 <clears throat> so it's a <clears throat> so european steel you know high tall or you know a, a basically good tolerance low impurity uh steel it is so lightweight and so compact the dark black allows me to do it. I, I thought this would be an okay. I got this one just a real steel kind of won me over um, to give them another chance with the uh, Solus, with the slip joint. And so I thought I'd try this thinking that it would be, you know, it, at the very worst, it could it would just be another D2 um, Chinese knife. It is very well made. The action is as good now as it was the whole the first time. It can maintain that. The color combo with the sort of gold and black, I think, is really classy. And with having all the black hardware, so I don't have like a gold would have been okay in the same sense that I would have liked it, same as the soulless. So it'll go with some of the brown stuff, but with the black sticking up, it would have really, the black would really stand out against a gray, uh, brown background. So that would probably be the worst problem with that one. But it's just so easy to use. The crossbar locks are fantastic. <clears throat> I did not expect to carry this knife. And this thing sits out because I carry it so much. It doesn't ever go back into the drawer that it's supposed to go into. It doesn't go back into the carrier. It literally sits out. I'm walking around. And this very often, if I leave my house, as I was saying, the, C the CGRB is often you know in my pocket if I'm just walking around the house. I don't take this with me if I leave. But if I leave the house, this has been one of the most used knives in my pocket for when I'm walking around. That's very, very true. Um, and the D2 steel works very good. The blade shape, it's just a real subtle drop point. Good jimping, a, a good place to pull. You can kind of choke up if you have to. You want to be careful. This is going to be delicate work, not heavy work with a tip like that. 
So the, ch the chance of you getting your finger caught is way up there. But the ability to almost reach the tip for scoring, uh, you know, the drop point has plenty of finger clearance if you're going to use it like that. Or if you're going to chop, you just got, you really don't. But you can choke up behind it. There's plenty of lock with the crossbar lock. It's lightweight, it's slim, compact, folds up so much into its own profile that it's very, very discreet in the pocket. And it has ended up in my pocket almost more than the, the number one knife, but just f way, way more than I ever expected. That brings us to number one. The Reich, Reich P865B, the reverse Tonto. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to leave it like that for a little while just so you can see. I bought this knife because it Reek does pretty good 14C28N. They they are they do high quality, inexpensive, high value knives. That's any of their 14C28N uh bladed knives I would recommend. I can tell you right now. If you go look at their website, they don't have this high end stuff. They make essentially one type of knife uh or one style and they do it really well and that there's something to be said for that um i bought this because i thought oh it's an actual reverse tonto it has the two fixing points and if you look at it like this it's got the curve right it looks like a little tonto knife and they reversed it it even has the pentagonal scales like a tonto would right so that's why i got this knife very very slim discreet the uh liner lock and the thumb stud it's a one-sided thumb stud that's reversible the liner lock is cut out it has decent action um it's slim again lightweight something you'll be in there so it's right just over two and a half ounces so extremely lightweight and this thing does everything well this blade shape, while still while thick enough to be robust, is still relatively slim. It's not the it's a full flat grind, but it's not the tallest blade, so it's got robust geometry. Um, very acute tip. All of the standard EDC stuff plus. This is my go-to knife. I put it in my pocket when I'm gonna go out in the garden because in the reverse or the forward grip this thing is sort of like a hook blade with but with the straight so pruning cutting open a bag being able to hit stuff and, and the toughness of the 14 c28n while retaining an edge can go into the dirt it can cut you know fibrous materials it doesn't have the uh serrations or anything but it's a little bit of sawing and this thing goes through it soft materials this is my go-to garden knife, and it all too often just stays in my pocket because there isn't an EDC task. This won't do well. There just isn't. It's slim. The, the biggest problem, I think, for most is how slim it is. So, But there's plenty of hand space compared to the other big knives that are in here. It's as long as the... Uh, Excuse me. It's as long as the Mordex. We're not this. I've gone too long. This is the number one knife. I'm not taking that out of there. You guys are just going to have to deal with my hiccup burp that just happened there as rude as it was. So please excuse me on that. But I ain't re-recording this whole thing. Um, yeah, it's a long knife. Lots of hand space. The pentagonal scales make it feel like it's contoured in all the best ways. It gives you a flat space on top or underneath it's a large control surface that still gives it the essential same benefits as contouring it deep carry that is extraordinarily deep carry light enough to fit in any pants i have deep enough carry and a big enough clip to go over any pants i have and, and really just does every edc task it was extremely cheap and for something I got thinking that I would probably never use it, but I would just have a true reverse Tonto. I've used this thing so much. This has been, it's, and there's something to be said. It's not all of the ones on this list are obviously beaters, but they're all, some of them are all relatively inexpensive and they're just good knives for a low price. One of the things I like in my collection, and you'll see a lot of the knives I review is I, I try to find bang for the buck, right? Value for the dollar. I like knives that do a good job. And this one for, I think it was like 
six fifty five, fifty four ninety five or something like that. I think it was like fifty to sixty bucks at the time I got it. It's probably more than that now. Inflation's jacked a lot of these knives up. But for something that was G ten all the way around, G ten backspacer has this true reverse Tonto styling to it. Um, and that's really why I bought it is to review a reverse Tonto or to have a reverse Tonto because I thought that you know that's that's what a Tonto is and that's reversed. Um, yeah, that I, I I thought that was really cool, and I have this is so ridiculously useful in so many everyday situations, and especially again, it, it the gardening knife capacity of this that I found this useful in with that thin narrow blade that can get in where there's a lot of vegetation and I don't have this big knife that's cutting other stuff I don't want to. I can be very precise, has a relatively long reach. I can even get way back on it to get into the plant. And yeah, that it, it really does well. So number one is the Reek. I'm not even going to say the number. The Reek Reverse Tonto. Didn't expect to really use it. Got it so because I wanted to have a true Reverse Tonto. And it has been one of my most used pocket knives period um for so many tacks i don't care i could probably get i could probably should get a second one just to make sure i have it in case it goes out of production but it's just a, a really good knife it's a true reverse tanto and it's so useful for a lot of things in like the garden or when you need to get a, a reach um and you, it, it's sharp enough that i can go in there and i don't have to uh, you know like push too hard it just cuts it has great cutting geometry, takes a ridiculously fine edge and holds it decently enough. Um, and Reek does a pretty good job. And I, I believe, I want I'll make sure here. Believe it's washers, double checking. I I'm pretty sure it's washers in there. So it's more deliberate in the open and close. But you're never gonna but you don't have to worry about dirt getting in there and mucking up the action. It'll it'll sweep away dirt all by itself. And the action is still pretty darn good. So number one, easily the knife that has ended up in my pocket more than I ever expected to and has been one of my most used knives on top of it is the Reek or Riker or whatever you want to call it, Reverse Tonto. So there you go, guys. There is the top 10 knives that have ended up in my pocket more than I expected or thought they were going to when I bought them. And I'm going to end that there. This has been a long one. So go ahead, take this video, watch it twice. Comment as much as you like. Be mindful of side effects. Remember to like and subscribe. This has been your Dose of Drew. I am said Drew. And you guys have a great rest of your night.